Welcome to Chain Tech, the show and podcast focusing on the latest trends in supply chain, procurement, and logistic technology. My name is Max Henry from the Global Supply Chain Council, and together with my co-host and special guest, we explore the personalities, startups, innovators, and industry players driving disruption in supply chain. From early stage to unicorns, and from cutting-edge technology to the people using it to help drive more innovative, agile, and resilient supply chain around the world. This is Chantech. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Chantech. I'm your host, Max Henry, from the Global Supply Chain Council. And I'm joined today with my co-host, Sandeep Chatterjee. Hi, Sandeep. How are you? I'm doing good. Thanks, Max. Uh, hi, Aditi. Uh, so, 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 just go ahead and introduce yourself very quickly to the audience. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, I'm a director with Deloitte. I look after the supply chain and technology functions uh, for the India region. And uh, looking forward to a very insightful session uh, with Aditi. All right, thanks again for joining us on another episode of the show as we continue to host some of the most interesting chain tech founders and discuss the rapid rise of supply chain, logistic, and procurement technology across the APAC region. As we jump into today's conversation, I want to make sure that you are also aware of the chain tech platform that we recently launched, and you can check it out at chaintech.net. You can also find uh, all the previous episodes of our podcast on chaintech.show. So joining us today are our guest, Aditi Sinha, who is the co-founder of Local, or Local.ai, uh, based uh, out of Bangalore in India. Hi, Aditi. How are you? I'm so good, Max. Thank you so much for having me here and very excited to have this conversation with you. All right. So as we get started, I just want to know, we always do this at uh, each beginning of our podcast. Maybe we'll go into your background and uh, I'd like to understand uh, a bit more about yourself. Where did you grow up? Uh, what was your background? Where did you study when you were younger? Yeah. Sure, definitely. So um, I I actually grew up in a tier two city in India uh, called Patna in the state of Bihar. And uh, but you know early on my parents were very focused on uh, both mine and my brother's education. Uh, so we went to the best school in the city, and uh, you know as a result of that, actually ended up uh, going to one of the best uh, colleges in India as well. Uh, it was called Bits Pilani, where I studied economics and fin, uh, and graduated in 2018. Okay. And then, so how did you actually get started? Uh, what was your first job after you graduated? Sure. Uh, so because I studied economics, I was really, really interested in the whole uh, field of data analytics. So my first uh, start as first job was uh, working in a data consultancy startup. It was called Social Corps, which is based out of New Delhi in India. And over there, I was working as a research analyst. So basically, I was sitting between the clients and the, and all the data projects that we used to do, scoping them out, uh, essentially executing them. Uh, and it was in that startup itself where I met my now co-founder, uh, Risha, uh, who had been working over there for the past four years. And together, we used to build a lot of tools for operation teams in logistics, FMCG, government, and so on. Okay, so you actually had one job experience and then founded your company, right? Right away. Yes, actually, uh, it was just for six months. So I would say I kind of uh, started up wow. almost right after graduation. Okay, so what actually motivated you to start this company, uh, Locale.ai? Yeah, actually, as I mentioned, you know, my uh, co-founder, Rishabh, uh, he had been working in the startup for the past four years. And uh, together, when we were building a lot of these kind of tools for operation teams, right, uh, we, we actually worked for companies in the vaccine distribution company. We worked for large FMCGs, governments. Uh, we actually realized that uh, the operations teams within all of these companies don't have the right kind of tooling that they need to be able to do their job effectively and efficiently. 
most of them were still using uh, you know excel sheets or some you know uh, random hacky dashboard that they had built in donnelly so what motivated both of us to start was the fact that you know we really really resonated with the problem we saw the problem firsthand and even experienced it ourselves because in that startup we were actually building a uh, similar kind of tools for operation teams but because it was a consultancy company you know we used to build these projects as one of solutions so what sort of you know uh, got us and uh, got us into thinking was hey can we build a product uh, around this that can sort of you know help operation teams uh, uh, sort of help with their daily workflow and manage all of their work that they're doing today very efficiently so if i have to ask you put it this way uh, like what problem are you trying to solve like uh, if you can explain a layman's terms for the benefit of everyone so this is the problem and this is what we are solving if you can sure. just uh, talk a little bit about that sure uh, so in one line in a very simple way if i have to explain you our product actually helps any operations team that they want with real time alerts and actions on top of that uh mm-hmm. what i mean by that is imagine let's say you're a logistics company and as a logistics company one of the you know very common problems that you have is delays and sla breaches uh what our product would do is as soon as you know uh, we get to know that there's a delay happening we will make sure that an alert gets sent to the right person who is responsible to solve the delay problem in that area or in that city and he can actually go ahead and sort of implement uh, an action to solve that problem whether that could be communicating with a driver who is sort of delivering the goods on on the ground or whether that could be talking to the warehouse manager and on top of that we have this whole collaboration and incident management where you can actually see what kind of issues are coming up again and again who is solving the issues uh, what is the typical time it takes to resolve an issue and so on uh, we've really been inspired by this product called pager duty which actually today exists for the devops and the infrastructure team uh, mm-hmm. so any time let's say there's something that breaks in the devops or the infrastructure team pager duty actually sends an alert to the right person hey you know let's say your website has crashed or the product is not working so that they can immediately go and solve the problem the idea was you know can we do something like what pager duty has done uh, not for the devops but for the real world operations sure uh, so as a follow up question again i'm not comparing uh, with the competition but there are similar products which are available in the market who are doing trying to address the same problem so if you can tell us what are you doing something very different uh, that will actually keep the viewers uh, interested about like what has been your uh, approach in solving this problem sure um, so i would basically answer this in two parts uh in the first part what actually we realized when we did a lot of research on our ops teams and the kind of tools that they use today we saw that you know today because something was always breaking in the operations world and because these teams were always firefighting uh mm-hmm. the tooling that they were currently using right most of them included you know let's say your bi tools uh, excel reports uh, you know some internal dashboards that the team had built for them but because of that right any time there was something that was breaking uh because it's not so easy to get that information right uh, you know right through the dashboard you have to actually go and let's say filter tables do pivot tables join and so on uh, by the time they already got to know that hey something is breaking over here and i need to go ahead and solve the problem it was already too late uh so in one in one line if i had to explain the problem with the status quo was that the dashboards and the reports that they that they were using actually made them very reactive but we want to help them make uh, we want to make them very proactive uh, mm-hmm. so our our thesis over here is as soon as something breaks we will alert you right at the same time that you know something is breaking and you need to go and solve that instantly right at that moment uh, and to answer your question on how we are different from some other products out there so actually alerts uh, today exist in a lot of bi tools as well so you have alerts as part of you know your most uh, important bi tools let's say power bi tableau and so on the problem with that is it's just a very small functionality uh, you know that they offer and the majority majority part of their offering is actually you know being able to make charts and graphs and build those beautiful dashboards so 
you know, we have the concept of something that we call actionable alerts at locale. What makes alert actionable? The first is, you know, it gets, uh, it gets sort of alerted to you in real time so that you can actually go and solve the problem. The second part is, part is that, you know, it goes to the right person in the team who actually needs to go and solve the problem. Uh, the third part is now, once you get to know that uh, something is breaking, you actually need to go ahead and solve the problem. And the fourth part is to actually go ahead and implement the problem. And if ca- in case it's not solved, go ahead and escalate it. Now, these are all the parts that uh, are not present in the typical BI tools that exist today. Uh, the alert that they have is very, very basic and very function- uh, functional. So what we want to do is build a foundation from alerts and build an entire collaboration and incident management on top of that. Okay. Uh, so Aditi, uh, companies uh, which are involved in supply chain operation are using, they have their own tool, right? They have software, like they, you know, they might be using a TMS solution, they might have WMS. Those mm-hmm. tools and software comes with also alert and notification. As, you know, so are you replacing, are you enhancing those notification? How does Locale, you know, help? Uh, those companies were already using those WMS or TMS solution in their current operations. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, Max, the way we've built the product, it is very extensible. What I mean by that is uh, how our product works is imagine all your entire data of your operations, right? Not just about from your TMS, but data about your customers, about, about your orders, about your finance, revenue, anything that you want. We actually integrate with all of the data directly from your data warehouse. And, you know, you can actually set up very configurable alerts and say that, you know, for example, any time, uh, you know, the order that is the the time that it take, took to actually pick up the order from this warehouse is greater than 10 minutes. Make sure that, you know, an alert gets sent to the warehouse manager. Uh, you can actually set so many use cases on the product itself. So to answer your question, uh, they might have set, you know, some basic alerts today on TMS, but how we are better than them is one, we actually deal with use cases across different uh, teams and verticals, right? So we, of course, start with operations teams, but operation also includes a bunch of things, right? NPS mm-hmm. score, customer churn, repeatable users. So we actually deal with all of those use cases that they can set up very easily on the product. And the second part is, as I mentioned, the concept of actionable alerts, where even though these systems have alerts, it's it's a very you know basic functionality as part of their offering. The whole value prop of Locale and what we offer is uh, once you get an alert, what happens after that, right? The ability to take actions, the ability to figure out why this alert happened, the ability okay. to escalate if the problem was not resolved, and so on. Okay, so you kind of uh, rec- you recommending some calls of actions uh, to the user. But to do that, you need to understand what the solution is doing. So in the case of WMS, you need to understand the the scenario, the context around the WMS platform, right? Uh, So are you, you know, is local, are you connecting with certain tools? Are you, are you, you know, focusing on certain type of software and, and is local kind of more like an add on on top of those existing supply chain or logistic tools that, companies are already using? Yes, it is like an add-on, uh, you know, with respect to all the current tools that they're using. Uh, how we go ahead and integrate is we directly integrate with their databases or data warehouses, where typically okay. all the data that the companies already have gets stored. So even that the data that they have in their TMS, they would probably store in their data warehouse. And the data warehouse acts as a central source of truth for all the data that we ingest into our system. And on top of that, data analysts can come and write, you know, SQL to configure alert triggers or even, you know, write uh, SQL queries to figure out, okay, what really happened. So if the order was delayed, which lap of the journey was it delayed? Was it in the first mile, mid mile, last mile? You can come and you get, you can get to know all of those insights very quickly on the product. Okay. Okay, uh, interesting. Yeah. yeah. So what okay, I understand guys. is, again, uh, you're, I know there's an event which has happened, there's an alert and you make a decision. Mm-hmm. So maybe this is what the current product is. So do you have any plans of getting into a, something called like a predictive or a prescriptive or you're already doing that? Uh, yes, we actually do. What uh, what we are currently working on, Sandeep, is an, an anomaly detection model. 
uh, where, uh, you know, imagine if you don't have to sort of come and set the thresholds and the conditions on your own, but using mm-hmm. all your past and historical data, if the com- the machine can itself uh, alert you anytime there is any kind of anomaly. Uh, and let's say, you know, any difference with respect to the desired behavior. So we're currently working on an AI model like that, where, you know, you don't have to come and set up an alert, but the system will already tell you based on, you know, what we have seen is the normal behavior and pattern, you know, to, in your operations today. Okay. And lo- look also, if I understand well, uh, you know, you're not only focusing on logistic, you're also covering other sectors. What would, what would you say is your biggest strength in terms of industry or sector right now within with your current solutions? Where do you, where do you see the, uh, having the most traction with customers? Yeah, sure. I think uh, for us, the most uh, sort of, you know, industries that have given us the most amount of traction are uh, what we call hyperlocal as well as, uh, you know, logistics. What we mean by hyperlocal is any uh, company that has operations within a city, so sort of intra-city operations, whether that's a uh, you know, ride hailing company, taxi company, or, uh, you know, take medicine delivery, food delivery, and so on, as well as logistics, which actually includes 3PL, 4PL, freight, uh, land freight, ocean freight, and all of those things, right? So we sort of have a mix of both of these uh, industries where we have the most amount of customers. Okay, uh, let's log, uh, talk a little bit about your company. In a, like, what is your, who is your competition? I know a lot of startups, a lot of established companies are already in this space. So who are your major competitors and uh, what are you trying to do? Of course, you spoke about how you are different than others, but would love to uh, hear about your competitors. Like um, the, how, what is your funding mechanism? Like, are you bootstrapped or you have raised capital, number of employees, uh, geographically, how are you? I need too many questions, but if you can just take it, let's take with, it one by one. Let's start with yeah. the competition first. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Definitely. Um, so actually, the interesting thing about uh, Locale is that uh, we actually have uh, found about two recent, uh, recently about two main competitors. Uh, one of them is called Logic Loop and the other is called Avenue.so. Both are companies based out of U.S., and um, the way we are sort of approaching the problem for the operations teams is uh, similar in some ways, right? Um, the crazy thing about this market is we believe, you know, this is the time when, uh, you know, a lot of products will be built for operations teams. And one of the reasons for that is um, because of what modern data stack has actually enabled for a lot of uh, data and operations teams together. Because of, you know, modern data stack and all the tools that have, you know, sort of existed in the past 10 years, uh, companies now have data warehouses and data lakes where all their data is actually stored into one place, right? So because of that, what happens is, uh, you know, it, it becomes very easy for us to enable analytics, intelligence, alerts, actions for operations teams. So what I'm just trying to say over here is that, you know, we believe that this market is going to grow so much bigger and it's already getting very hot. Um, how about in- uh, Aditi? How about the big players? I mean, I, I, I can start thinking about SAP, who has, you know, with a, a market leader with ERP and you have Oracle uh, with a strong database. You have uh, IBM. Or you have uh, Microsoft. Yeah, you have, Microsoft as well. So are those big guys uh, competing somehow with uh, with what you do? Or could they um, compete and, and, and just, uh, you know, replace what you're doing? Actually, I would not consider them to be competitors, Max. And the reason for that is even if a company, let's say, adopts Locale, uh, they will not actually stop using an Oracle or a Microsoft Excel uh, or ACP or any other tool like that. Because the value prop of all of these uh, products is very different from what we are offering. So Locale, I would say, is an additive uh, tooling in terms of their entire stack that they have, um, which is why we don't see these companies as direct competitors. And from whatever research that we have done in terms of the customers that we have or the you know conversations that we've done, uh, most of the companies in the logistics space don't actually use a lot of these products for their alerts. Even though I know they have this functionality because that's not their major offering or their major value prop. Okay. Let's talk about, yeah, Sandy was asking about your current uh, funding uh, situation. How did you actually start a company? Did you invest your own money? Did you raise uh, some funds? Yeah. 
yeah uh, so because uh, you know we started uh, this company fairly after college um, we actually bootstrapped it for i would say the first 5 months post that we actually got an angel check so we had an angel investor and through his check we were able to sort of build the prototype and build the first mvp of the product uh, post which we we've had two funding rounds uh, one was a pre seed round and the second was the seed round uh, our seed round happened last year from one of the top institutional investors in the country called chirate ventures uh, it was for 1.33 million dollars uh, and yeah we are hoping to raise our series a very soon as well how do you make money at it with you with local solutions how do, how do you charge clients sure so we actually have a saas based based subscription model uh and how we go about our pricing is a tiered pricing based on some you know value based matrix for example mm-hmm. number of seats number of alerts they've, they that they've created alert frequency and so on and so forth and uh, where are you based out of like is it geographically distributed team if you can talk about your team size as well sure so we are about 25 people now uh almost everyone is in bangalore uh, but me along with my sales team we also travel you know a lot of times uh, to different places to meet our customers and your customers are based out of uh, india or abroad or how is the customer mix uh, yeah actually we did not plan for it to be this way but it so happened that our customers are actually uh, distributed across 33 countries so along with our, our customers we ha- actually you know empower their operations and local is empowering operations in 33 different countries and across five different industries at the moment and typically you, what we have uh, seen as a the first comp, uh, customer is always uh, most difficult to get once you get the first customer so how did you go about it absolutely um so actually it was a combination of a bunch of things uh, i think what really helped was coming to this new city of bangalore where both me and my co-founder came and we started developing uh, our network and uh, the first customer that we got was actually through the network so this kind person actually connected us to the customer but side by side we were also doing uh, you know a lot of cold reach out campaigns uh, you know doing a lot of marketing and uh, content on linkedin so when we used to go for meetings people actually knew what we were doing and they knew about us already so that also helped in addition to uh, you know all the hustle that you do when you try to get meetings with all these prospects adit you mentioned that you have customers around the world but how do you support those customers which are outside of india that must be difficult for you uh, first you need to engage with them you need to then uh, you know uh, you know integrate do the implementation and then support them as well uh, is it challenging for you to actually do this you know uh, being based in bangalore um not yet i would say max uh, but you know this is something we aim to focus more and more as we go forward and focus on particular geographies uh the reason why we have so many customers distributed all over the world is because of how strong uh inbounds we get so about 50% of our current customers are actually inbounds uh who who mostly come from you know either google searching us uh, or landing on our blogs and then you know reaching out to us and sort of getting kick started on the product um so we you know we have customers from japan from vietnam from singapore from india of course europe middle east and so on right so it's very distributed that way um i'm sorry i i missed your second question yeah so i, I was curious to understand how do you actually uh, onboard them because you yeah. know you are you know your solution is fairly complex you need to have access to database you need to you know there are certain level of customization and integration i guess so when you're not close to them and you don't have access to them physically uh that must be quite challenging so how do you how do you go around this yeah uh yeah actually just to clarify max we don't do any customization for any company and that's how we've built the product okay. um so how the integration works and this is something we've worked very hard to build and make sure the experience is also right uh the current integration takes just 30 minutes 
um, because we have integrations with the most common data sources, databases and warehouses, what you need to do is just, you know, integrate directly with the with the product and it sort of sits as a wrapper on top of your database or data warehouse, right? Uh, the setup is just 30 minutes long and, uh, you know, you can just quickly get started, uh, integrate, configure your tables, uh, write your SQL to trigger your first alert and get started with the product. So okay. we basically spend a lot of time and effort in making sure the onboarding process is really, really quick and you're able to get the value out of the product fairly quickly and very easy. Okay, that's that easy. Okay, interesting. Yes, Sandeep? Yeah, so uh, again, uh, I looked at your background. Uh, you went to, uh, you were brought up in uh, Patna, then you went to Bits Pilani again, one of the best colleges in India. And then typically way uh, our social system is like our parents will invest whatever it takes to get us educated. And then yeah. what they expect is uh, you get a job and that's how it works. Then you must have faced a lot of resistance. And again, I'm not uh, biased against anything, but what typically happens is there may be some gender bias that a female co-founder and all that. So what kind of challenges did you face uh, when you started all this and how did you go about it? I, so when we actually started, uh, you know, uh, honestly, we never knew this is something that would work out. So just to tell you like a little bit on the background story, uh, when we started, we just thought, hey, you know, why not give this a shot? And, you know, if this works out great. And if not, it's OK. You know, we're very early on in our careers and we'll go and get, you know, some good, decent enough jobs. So uh, and you anyways had runway for just six months for both of us. Right. So we just uh, both of us and uh, me included, I went and I told my parents, hey, you know, let me try this out for six months uh, and let me see where this works out. And uh, the good and the fortunate thing is those six months are still lasting and uh, it's hopefully it will go on for a long time now. So um I think we we did not take it very seriously. Uh, we just ran it as an experiment and, you know, we just wanted to see what's going to happen uh, if we just go out and give this a shot. Uh, I think that kind of attitude helped with my parents. Uh, but of course, you know, uh, you're absolutely right on the gender bias and uh, there's, there's so much, there's so many more challenges that women face, uh, you know, uh, that a lot of times men don't uh, get to face and uh, they also have that kind of privilege. Uh, this has sort of come up a lot in the journey. And right now with, with uh, you know, with my age in particular, uh, with my parents, you know, uh, subtly, uh, you know, like in convincing me to get married soon and get settled, uh, you know, that my co-founder doesn't sort of, you know, get to face. So all of those, you know, subtle things is there. I, the, subtle things are there. Um, I think what matters is uh, you need to be very, in my opinion, you need to be very um, focused and clear on what you want and uh, just, you know, have sort of a plan to convince your parents uh, around it. And as long as, uh, you know, you have clarity, I think hopefully things mm. will work out. Yeah, I was telling Sandy before the interview that you actually are first uh, female founder. So uh, yeah. who actually, you know, does the interview. I mean, if I look at the... Uh, the chain tech database and, and, and count the number of female founders, which are focusing on supply chain logistic or procurement startup anywhere in Asia, maybe worldwide. It's a super tiny number. What's, your, what's your take on this? Why there's now, now more women focusing on supply chain technology, uh, or in just supply chain in general? Because I also understand the supply chain profession quite well in India, which is primarily male dominated. Uh, uh, very, very few women as well. So what's, what's the problem with supply chain in general and the, and the, and the, the place of women in this profession? Yeah. Trust me, Max, I have spent a lot of time thinking about this. And, you know, on this day, if I ever get a person who is a female that is my decision maker that I need to go and sell to, I just become so much more excited and happy, right? The, the, the connection and the bond is, it, it's just very, very different. Um, I think there are lots of reasons behind this. I feel one is, you know, like logistics and supply chain is obviously a male dominated industry. Um, uh, and I feel a lot of it has to do with the fact that 
um you need to have those you need to be very street smart you need to get things done from you know blue collar workers and people on ground people on on the people who are basically um shuttling on the road so i think that requires a different kind of a skill uh i'm definitely not saying that women don't have it or they can't do it uh but it's just something i feel that you know men have taken more opportunities in and because when you look at an industry and you don't see uh you know people who are similar to you and who are representing some part of your story as well you feel you know you subconsciously maybe feel okay this is not the right place for me so i think what we need to do is uh get more and more women in this uh, industry together uh, i'll tell you one stat actually in the past 3 years of selling this product i've only encountered two women uh this includes you know all the countries that we have sold to where who was uh, the decision maker that you know a woman that was a decision maker that we had to sell to so yeah the the situation is actually quite grim and we need to do yeah. go ahead but i think i think but i think it's uh, pro- probably a, a, an india problem because if i if you look at europe or the us you actually have a lot of uh, cpos and and supply chain vps which are women uh, top executive in big corporations uh, so women are clearly you know climbing to the top in the supply chain logistics field but in asia and probably more particularly in india uh, it's still very much male dominated yeah absolutely yeah, I, because I, the, i think the mindset is still yeah. uh, it has to change because it's not that uh, somebody is not capable but i think it's all about the mindset that uh it's very women are supposed to do this this and men are supposed to but yeah i think that's uh, maybe that a little bit is very strong still very strong in the country today right that we yeah. have these gender norms that women are supposed yeah. to do these things and men are supposed to do these things and uh and when you let's say even actually take up a path that is not that common the entire society including your parents most of the times tell you hey you know are you really sure you want to do it or a lot of times even uh forbid you from from doing it right so it's something that we as a whole as i said and as a society need to work on and basically yeah improve. okay sure and i think you have been in the startup space for quite some time because i was looking at your background uh, uh, you did something with hyperloop you were a technical writer uh, you were so uh, if you if i have to ask you what is how does the current landscape of the supply chain and logistics startup looks like because uh, the lot of startups which have come in the last 2 3 years and and do you have any uh, forum where you founders exchange information share your concern sure i think um sandeep the pandemic has been a very uh, you know i would say an amazing enabler for a lot of supply chain and tech startups out there right um and if you would just see the number of startups that have really got funding uh and actually a good amount of funding after pandemic uh that are operating in the logistics supply chain uh you know for freight forwarding any of these sort of um industry it's really grown a lot and um i think the reason for that is that you know the pandemic actually portrayed and showed the world how broken our supply chain system really is right uh, the way it is really built today it it cannot really handle such spikes and such surges in demand uh it's really built for just in time deliveries and we already noticed right that as soon as there was some load on the system it completely collapsed so i think everyone including the companies that are there in the logistics and the supply chain space uh they are now much more aware and they understand that they also need to be much more technically driven data driven they need to have those systems robust and sturdy systems internally to track to have ai ml all of these things if they need to su- sort of survive in the next decade um so i think that's it's been a great shift and that's definitely you know an amazing news for all of us in the ecosystem uh, there's definitely so much that you know all of us can sort of learn from each other in that front uh which also brings me to the second question that you asked um so i think uh unfortunately we don't have a lot of platforms like that but i i really you know love the initiative that you guys have taken and especially max uh has taken uh you know the with the group that he has there's so much sort of knowledge sharing that is happening in that um until now until at least till the time that i was not a part of the group 
uh, I just used to reach out to, you know, uh, you know, founders in the, in the same space uh, on LinkedIn or email. Uh, I have unfortunately not been a part of any uh, sort of, you know, uh, closed space or closed group yet, but I'm really, really now glad to be a part of chain tech. Okay. Yeah. That's something we're trying to do. It's not easy. I can tell you to actually bring those, all those founders from different companies and different countries. There's still this attitude of, being skeptical and not wanting to share and, you know, thinking that the person in the same group, it might be your competitor. Uh, so we're still facing uh, quite a bit of resistance, but you know, as you know, I'm pushing hard yes, and I'm not giving up on the idea because if you look at all the segments of the startup scene, whether it's FinTech or EdTech or, you know, uh, there are already a lot of very active groups where all those founders get together yes. and exchange information, share experience, help, help each other because everybody is facing the same issues and the same problem. Yes. Uh, but sometimes it's just hard for them to actually sh- uh, talk about it. I want to go back to, uh, to local, uh, again, your company. And I want, I was curious to understand as you currently grow this company and uh, you, as you mentioned earlier, you are starting to get clients overseas. What is your biggest challenge, you know, right now in your current, you know, growth and development of a company and what really keep you worried or awake at night right now? Yeah. Uh, so right now, uh, of course, this changes, uh, I would say every week, every month, every year, uh, Max, but uh, I can definitely share what's keeping me up at the moment. Uh, so we're actually uh, experimenting with a new GTM model where we are uh, experimenting with a complete bottoms up or self serve approach where let's say if you are a, a data analyst or an ops manager in any of these companies you can actually come try out the product on your own set up alerts without having to talk to any salesperson uh, of course uh, you know like the salesperson or the customer success person will reach out to you and we'll be there if you need help but we are basically trying to create an onboard onboarding flow where everything can be driven by the product uh, it's something that we're currently working on and launching very soon in about a month. So yeah, just keeping finger, fingers crossed and hoping, you know, uh, that uh, this sort of helps us also grow much faster uh, with respect to right now. Are you worried about funding or, you know, talent or is there any other aspect of your operation or of your company that you're worried about? Um, no, definitely not funding. I, I personally believe Max that uh, good companies, uh, will get funded irrespective of, you know, how the, how bad the economy is. Uh, of course, it will be harder, but at the end of the day, if you're a company that is solving a real problem, uh, and that, that has proof points that it actually works. I personally believe that, you know, funding will come into place. Uh, I think the talent bit is definitely very tricky. Um, But, you know, it's definitely improved uh, as compared to last year. I think last year there was a total big frenzy going on in the market, especially on the engineering front where engineers were demanding crazy high salaries, people had who had just graduated. So I think the crazy salaries have definitely reduced. Um, So that's been a a, a big uh, help in in general in the hiring front. But I think hiring is generally a very... uh, challenging bit how do you sort of attract the smartest people and get them to sort of uh, have an amazing experience and you know have their retention as well right so I think all of these three are a very challenging aspect aspect of building a company okay and uh, And to look at yeah so any company again the definition of any company is it's a going concern it's there to stay Mm -hmm. and unfortunately there have been companies which have been there and then uh, they got bought away by somebody else. So again, uh, so what are your views? Maybe where do you look? Uh, what are your views about the company in the next three? Do I know it's hard to, it's not like you take a crystal ball and try to predict something and uh, the pandemic, nobody predicted this. So at least if you will have a longer view. So three to five years down the line, where do you see your company? Sure. I think Sandeep, what we want to build is a product that is customized and, uh, you know, personalized to the needs and wants of operations teams. And why I say this is because if you look at any team in the company, you know, you take marketing, finance, HR, data, uh, sales, um, all of these teams in a company have very specialized tools 
that they're using, which is basically built and designed for what they need and they want, right? Ops is the only team in the company that is either using Excel sheets or they're using some internal dashboard that company has built for themselves. So the first thing we want to do is build a product that can empower our ops people, uh, build a product that feels like, you know, it's their home and that feels like, okay, you know, someone has now um, empathized with their problem and cater to what they really want. And from there, you know, the idea is uh, if you build a product that, you know, like basically caters to the needs of your persona, they would basically uh, spend the entire day on that product. So we're really inspired by what some of the tools have done, right? For example, if you take Salesforce or HubSpot, uh, no matter whichever uh, sort of CRM you're using, right? Your salespeople spend 30, 40, 50% of their entire day on that tool, right? Uh, to make sure that their workflow is productive and efficient. And we want to do the same thing for ops, right? Our vision is ops teams should sit on top of locale and empower all the amazing stuff that they do, they do today, right? Whether it's delivering and making sure that vaccines have uh, reach the place at the right time, especially before, uh, you know, in, in the in the right uh, state, especially before they were able to, they could not go stale. Or for example, whether it's a or organ donation, uh, you know, activity that is going on and you, you need to transplant the organ from point A to point B at the right time and making sure that no delays happen. So a lot of these critical moments where, you know, where in a world where every moment counts, uh, we believe our ops teams are the super uh, ops teams have the superpower to actually enable all of that, and we want to be the tool through which they enable all that. Okay, what would be your advice to uh, someone who's starting a new company focusing on supply chain technology? I think there would be two things. The first one is if you want to start a company, I would just say go for it. Uh, because I think if you really start uh, and, you know, just spend a lot of time with the with the customers that you're solving for, uh, whichever persona or whichever type of company that you're solving for in the supply chain uh, in the logistics space, uh, you will actually figure out what is the problem you want to solve. Uh, so just spend a lot of time with the customer, talk to them, understand their problems. But all of this comes uh, after you you decide to start. So just go ahead and start and just take that step. Uh, I think the more we overthink, the more advice we will, you know, go ahead and sort from everyone else. Uh, um, our minds will create more and more reasons on why it doesn't make, make sense to take that risk. So, you know, just go for it is what my advice would be. Okay, great. All right, got some quick fire questions just to wrap up this interview uh, for your DT. So let, get ready. And this is uh, maybe a surprise to you, but uh, this is something we do at the end. Cats or dogs? Sorry, I'm Max. I couldn't hear you. If you had to choose between cats or dogs, which oh, one cats. would you go for? Definitely cats. Okay. Window or aisle? Window. <laughs> Your favorite action movie? If you have one. Or your favorite <laughs> movie in general? Uh, I really like Wolverine. Okay. But I don't watch What's a you... lot of action movies, so... <laughs> Yeah, I'm very okay. nice. What's your favorite sandwich? Um, I don't know if you've ever had this, but I really like chicken tikka, tikka sandwich uh, that you okay. get. Yeah. That's the Indianized version of the yeah. sandwich. Exactly. exactly. What's your most used app on your phone? I'm guilty of this, but I think it has to be WhatsApp. Okay. Well, you don't have to be guilty. That's usually the answer. What's your favorite tool to? Uh, did I lose Max and Deep or? I I think we we lost him. Yeah, okay. he's back. I came back. So I was asking you, what is your favorite tool to build your company right now? Uh, I really love Notion. Uh, it's basically the tool uh, where you can have the entire documentation of all the teams and the entire company in one place and really, really like the thought that they've put into it. Uh, the other tool I really like is this product called Linear, which is actually built for uh, engineering teams and their workflows. So I think if you're starting a company, you would highly recommend both of these products. Okay. Uh, describe the rest of your life in just a few words. Describe a race? The rest, no, the rest of, of your, of your life. life. What do the you want to do? Yeah. 
you mean how i want the rest of my life to be yeah exactly 20 30 years from now what how do you see yourself or where you know what do you want to do or... i think um even though i uh, you know we are building this company i actually see myself as an artist uh okay. because at the end of the day i feel creating a company is in a lot of ways um creating art and uh, you know creating good design because you know it depends on how how you what are you building the product uh, and you know what's the design you are taking and how are you designing the entire org so i just think at the end of the day um after 30 20 years i just want to look back and just be proud of the art that i've created um, and what are you into painting sculpture what you what, what are you into yeah um i'm actually uh, a lot into music uh, i sing okay. right. uh, i also write a lot and i sometimes paint so i i just feel like you know like this it just building a company is where you know i sort of channel a lot of those artistic inclinations i have in some or the other way um and you know just when i look back i just want to be proud and say that hey this is the this is the art that i created and uh I just okay. it, it doesn't matter if the world remembers me but the world should remember the art at the end of it. So day. okay so you need to get a good exit with local okay <laughs> makes a lot of money and then you can move to goa and become <laughs> an artist you know um for the rest of your life. <laughs> yes why not I'm so open for it. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent thank you very much Aditi very great talking to you it was a good interview I also want to thank you Sandeep for Uh, joining us and uh, helping me to understand what local is uh, all about so uh, it was great having you uh, Aditi and we look forward again to see you next time yeah thank you so much it was a pleasure speaking to both of you have a great day ahead bye bye thank you bye bye thank you guys for listening on chantech and then uh, we'll again see you at our next episode right okay thank you bye bye